After defeating the Demon Frog and destroying the Demon Realm, Wang Ling granted Er Ha's request by creating a new world for the demons to live in. He also allowed Er Ha to stay in the human world as his pet dog. Some time later, Wang Ling was busy studying in his room, which made Er Ha curious about why he was suddenly so focused on schoolwork with his laptop. Jin Ke explained to Er Ha that Wang Ling was working on a Way of Heaven program from the Grand Forgetting Trick to hide his true identity as the Immortal King. As soon Rong had found out about his real power, Wang Ling didn't want to directly use the Grand Forgetting Trick because it was dangerous. After finishing the Way of Heaven program, Wang Ling gave some of his power to a tiny spirit creature named Shou Yin, who scanned and stored the program into a database so Wang Ling wouldn't have to use the Grand Forgetting Trick anymore. However, Erha started to doubt Wang Ling's abilities and saw Shou Yin as just a toy, believing nothing, not even Wang Ling, could be stronger than the Way of Heaven. The next morning, while Wang Ling was getting ready for school, he got a text from Sun Rong wishing him a good morning. They talked about their upcoming exam, and Sun Rong also showed concern about Wang Ling's great power. Wanting to stay unnoticed at school, Wang Ling promised Sun Rong that he would control himself and not use his power. He was also glad that Sun Rong only knew about his power reaching the incarnation phase, meaning she didn't know he was the immortal king. Shortly after, Wang Ling's father, Wang Jiao, showed him a new weapon made from the Way of Heaven programming. Wang Jiao explained that the weapon could be activated by saying a special passphrase, but he accidentally triggered it and fainted for a while. After Wang Jiao woke up, Wang Ling quickly took the weapon, already knowing how it worked from what his father had told him before losing his memory. When he got to school, Wang Ling heard his classmate Chan Chao excitedly talking about their upcoming physical arts class with a new teacher. Chan Chao was eager to see the teacher's skills and wanted to show off his own as a member of the famous Chen family known for their martial arts talent. But his best friend Guo Hao warned him not to underestimate the teacher, as the masters at their school were at least at the golden pill phase, making Chan Chao's skills look small in comparison. Still, Chan Chao stayed confident about his potential to grow. Shortly after, their homeroom teacher, Master Pan, arrived and told the students that their physical art teacher couldn't make it today because he was sick. At that moment, a man tried to enter the classroom, but Master Pan quickly shut the door with her power, telling the students that they would have swordsmanship class instead, taught by Master Wang. Hearing this, Chan Chao felt disappointed and lost his excitement, while Wang Ling seemed to have expected it since he was busy finishing the Way of Heaven program the night before. With his father's weapon, Wang Ling hoped to get through the day without any problems or causing major damage. Later, the students gathered in the school's newly renovated gym, where the elite class and other students were also there to train their skills. Guo Hao and his friends admired the gym, which was improved to be stronger and better thanks to the funding from Soon Rong's wealthy family. Soon, Master Wang arrived carrying something with him. Before starting the lesson, he introduced the legendary sword master, Fun Rue, who was not well known before. Master Wang explained that Fun Rue had mastered Way of Heaven level swordsmanship at a young age, even though this skill was extremely hard, even for immortals. When the students asked how strong someone with Way of Heaven skills could be, Master Wang said they could easily destroy mountains and seas if they reached the 10th or Way of Heaven phase. Hearing this, the students got excited and started talking about Fan Rue's greatness, but Guo Hao seemed unsure. Thinking that academy students like them probably wouldn't get a chance to learn Fan Rue's swordsmanship, Master Wang then surprised everyone by showing the wordless book, a rare treasure from Faction 60 that was once thought to be just a rumor. He demonstrated how the book worked by channeling spiritual power into both his hands, placing them on the book, and focusing his heart and mind. The wordless book would then analyze their spiritual power based on their basic skills and suggest the best swordsmanship techniques for them. The sword skills ranged from level 1 to 5, and with his skills, Master Wang had reached the 5th level. Although not all students could learn swordsmanship from the wordless book, Master Wang gave them a chance to try it out because it was such a rare opportunity. The first student to try the wordless book was Ku Swan, who was eager to be the first to succeed. However, Ku Swan failed to break through the book's barrier and was easily thrown back. Seeing this, Master Wang warned the students about the risks, 
saying that those with low basic skills, like Ku Swan, might faint, lose hair, or even go bald instantly. Hearing this, some students were scared to try after seeing what happened to Ku Swan, fearing they might end up the same way. However, Chan Chao, feeling confident, stepped up to try. As the future heir of the Chin family, Chan Chao showed strong basic skills and managed to reach the third level to learn swordsmanship from the book. Master Wang praised Chan Chao as a talented student, making Chan Chao proud of himself for receiving the compliment. After that, Master Wang called Wang Ling to use the wordless book, explaining that they had bought special insurance to protect the book, as it was the most valuable treasure of Faction 60. This was because Wang Ling often caused accidents that damaged school buildings or other facilities. Soon Rong then asked about the insurance for the newly renovated gym, but Master Wang assured her that the gym was built with the best materials, and he was sure Wang Ling couldn't damage it. Knowing he might not fully control his power, Wang Ling asked Jin Kei to lend him some strength since Jin Kei's power was much weaker compared to his own, with a ratio of 1 to 100. Even with Jin Kei's help, Wang Ling quickly reached the Way of Heaven level swordsmanship, causing the building to collapse and summoning a giant, celestial sword from the sky. Seeing this, everyone was amazed by Wang Ling's unexpected display of power, as they had thought he was weak before. Realizing his mistake, Wang Ling told Master Wang to ensure all school property and use Jin Kei to destroy the huge celestial sword. Right after, Wang Ling used his ultimate restoration technique to rebuild the gym and used his father's weapon to erase everyone's memory of what happened. However, Sun Rong was too close to Wang Ling when he activated the weapon, causing her to faint from the bright flash. Worried, Master Wang urged Wang Ling to quickly take Sun Rong to the infirmary for treatment. In another place, an old man was amazed when he saw the celestial sword appear from the sky. His own sword, which also saw the event, congratulated the old man because after so many years, he finally found someone who could be his successor as the immortal sword master. This person had reached the way of heaven level swordsmanship and summoned a celestial sword. The old man was happy because the celestial sword appeared in the area where the shadow faction had been destroyed. He believed that the person who reached the way of heaven level swordsmanship was the same person who destroyed the shadow faction. Knowing his time was limited, the old man decided to find his successor quickly. The scene then changed to a secret gathering where Fun Rue and Chan Nun Swan, the legendary grandmasters, were being honored. The members of the gathering bowed before a painting of Chan Nun Swan, showing their great respect for him. Soon after, the leader of the gathering asked why King Jiao was not present at the meeting. One of the members explained that King Jiao was on an important mission. In reality, King Jiao was busy checking his score in a swordsmanship simulator game, where he had held the top score for the past 30 years. The scene then shifts to Sun Rong being examined by Dr. Li at her home, requested by her grandfather, Sun Yiwan. Sun Yiwan was very worried about Sun Rong because she suddenly fainted at school. He thought Sun Rong might be exhausted from pushing herself too hard to study since she had always been eager to learn many things from a young age and had perfect grades. Sun Rong was a top student who had received many awards, so many that the trophies and certificates no longer fit in their home. As Dr. Lee sighed, Sun Rong and her grandfather feared she might have a serious illness, but Lee assured them that Sun Rong was fine. He explained that Sun Rong might be stressed from focusing too much on her studies and suggested that Sun Yuan take Sun Rong to a sanitarium on Chrysanthemum Island. Lee mentioned that the sanitarium was founded by his master to provide better medical services for cultivators in the city. Although the sanitarium was still being built due to a lack of funds, Lee promised that Sun Rong could use the completed experience area. Hearing this, Sun Yiwan eagerly typed on his phone, while Lee turned on the TV to see breaking news about the Sun family fully funding the sanitarium project on Chrysanthemum Island, making their master's dream of better medical services for the public come true. The next day, Wang Ling prepared to visit Sun Rong, but his mother told him to change his clothes and gave him a bag of gifts for Sun Rong, as she knew he was going to see her. Although Wang Ling was supposed to go with his friends, they were all busy with their own tasks. Guo Hao had to run his family store because his parents were on a business trip. Lin Shouyu was working part-time, and Chan Chao said he had to complete an important mission in an online game. So, 
They asked Wang Ling to visit Sun Rong on their behalf. In the end, Wang Ling arrived at the sanitarium with Er Ha, and Sun Rong was happy to see them. Meanwhile, Sun Yuan was watching his granddaughter through CCTV cameras around the sanitarium. His bodyguard suggested using a headset to listen in on Sun Rong and Wang Ling's conversation, but Sun Yuan refused, feeling sure that Wang Ling was not a threat to his granddaughter. Er Ha also spoke highly of Wang Ling, but the bodyguard was upset because he secretly had romantic feelings for Sun Rong, who was his childhood friend. Sun Rong was glad to receive gifts from her friends, but was curious about Wang Ling's gift. Wang Ling pulled out a water bottle from the bag and heated the water inside. Sun Rong thought it was a healing potion, but it was just plain hot water. Disappointed, Wang Ling then gave her a limited edition pack of instant noodles, which was very special to him. After that, Sun Rong told Wang Ling that she would have a recovery test and asked him to join her because she heard it would be fun. They went to the experience area, which had many games, and Sun Rong was asked to create a special ID to access the games. Her first challenge was a vision test with a claw machine game. Even though she didn't pass, she got a decent B plus grade, showing her vision was normal. She then asked Wang Ling to try the game. The jealous bodyguard, wanting to embarrass Wang Ling, secretly told the administrator to make the game more difficult. When Wang Ling started playing, the claw spun wildly, making Sun Rong think the machine was broken. However, Wang Ling kept playing calmly, collected a lot of toys, and got the highest score. His vision test results showed an impressive SSR plus score. Seeing this, the bodyguard accused Wang Ling of cheating and reported it to Sun Yuan. But Sun Yuan disagreed, saying Wang Ling's amazing performance was due to his truly remarkable vision, reminding him of his own great eyesight when he was young. Er Ha disagreed with Sun Yuan, saying that no one, in the past or future, could match Wang Ling. Moving on to the agility test, Wang Ling once again amazed Sun Rong and her grandfather by achieving perfect scores, even higher than the maximum. Though the bodyguard was annoyed by the damaged machines, Sun Yuan praised Wang Ling and remembered his own youthful skills. He told the bodyguard to replace the machines with new, safer ones. Frustrated with Sun Yuan's support for Wang Ling, the bodyguard ordered the administrator to make the games as difficult as possible but Wang Ling still got the highest scores with ease. When Wang Ling effortlessly scored a basket from a long distance, Er Ha joked that Wang Ling was like another version of Slam Dunk. However, Sun Yuan disagreed, knowing that Wang Ling used his spiritual power on the basketball. Meanwhile, King Zhao grew angry as his game records were beaten by an ID named Aegon, which was actually Sun Rong's ID being used by Wang Ling. In the final game, Jin Kei asked Wang Ling to hold back his power, but Wang Ling still broke the machine easily, without using any power. This made King Jiao even more upset, as Aegon continued to beat his records, and it also frustrated the bodyguard because Wang Ling kept breaking machines. Afterward, Wang Ling used his game coins to get a doll, and gave it to Sun Ro. Meanwhile, King Jiao kept trying to beat Aegon's records, getting more frustrated and determined to win. On the way home, Er Ha told Wang Ling about King Jiao, warning him that King Jiao might want revenge for losing his records. Er Ha also explained that King Jiao was part of the evil Four Emblems faction, which was a branch of the Infinite Sword faction. However, Wang Ling didn't seem worried, as he also knew that Er Ha had managed to get the third highest score in the Swordsmanship Simulator game. Later, during a meeting of the Four Emblems faction, their leader, Song Wu, was annoyed that King Jiao was not present. A member named Su Hu explained that King Jiao was on a mission to get rid of someone who had humiliated their faction. Hearing this, Song Wu became curious about who the challenger was, while King Jiao was seen heading out to confront Sun Rong, who owned the Aegon ID that had beaten his records. At school, Master Wang and Master Pan were having a heated argument because they had different views on the physical art lessons. Master Wang believed that students should take physical art more seriously to prepare for real battles, but Master Pan disagreed. During their debate, an old man arrived, showing interest in becoming the new physical art teacher. Master Wang quickly recognized him as a sword saint, especially after sensing just 10% of his spiritual power. When Master Wang asked about his intentions, the old man, 
named Master Yi, explained that he was looking for a successor and thought he could find one at the school. He had seen the celestial sword and wanted to pass on his famous swordsmanship. Although Master Wang seemed ready to accept Master Yi as the new teacher, he told him that he first had to defeat Master Pan in a duel to get the job. When Soon Rong and Gua Hao saw Master Yi, they had doubts because he looked old and weak, but Chan Chao thought Master Yi might be hiding his true strength. Wang Ling immediately recognized Master Yi as a famous sword master and wondered why he was at their school. Jin Kei guessed that Master Yi might be searching for a new student to teach. However, Wang Ling didn't care much about it because he believed his swordsmanship was not better than the other students. Even though Master Yi was interested because of the celestial sword Wang Ling had summoned. Meanwhile, Wang Ling kept an eye on King Jiao's movements, sketching a small formation in his book. Wang Ling had figured out that King Jiao planned to harm Sun Rong. While flying over the ocean on his way to Faction 60, King Jiao was surprised to get a notification that someone was watching him through CCTV cameras. Later, Chan Chao and his friends met Master Yi on the school field, where Master Yi showed his spiritual power, impressing everyone except Wang Ling, who stayed calm. Chan Chao became more convinced of Master Yi's legendary skills when he saw him float in the air using his spiritual power. Chan Chao and Gua Hao wanted to learn physical art, but felt discouraged when they realized their schedule was already filled with Master Pan's classes. Meanwhile, Soon Rong considered learning from Master Yi after a short conversation with him. The next day, Soon Rong and Wang Ling visited Master Pan in the teacher's lounge and told her they had been waiting for her to teach their class because they missed her. Happy to see their excitement, Master Pan agreed to return to teaching the elite class. Just as she was about to have lunch, Chan Chao and Wang Ling showed up, saying they wanted to learn and improve, and asked Master Pan to teach them as elite class students. Because of her strong commitment to teaching, Master Pan agreed to Chan Chao's request, even though it meant giving up her lunch break. A few hours later, as Master Pan was resting in her office, tired from teaching, Wa Hao and Wang Ling approached her, asking for help with refining vitality pills. Although exhausted, Master Pan asked if the students ever felt tired from all the studying, but Gua Hao said they were elite class students. So they always had to stay eager to learn and become the best cultivators in the country. Reluctantly, Master Pan agreed to help them. Feeling drained afterward, she quickly locked herself in the teacher's lounge to avoid any more requests. But then, Wang Ling, Sun Rong, and Xiu Yu arrived at the lounge, only to find the door locked. Noticing there were no security cameras, Wang Ling accidentally broke the door and walls with his power. Despite asking her to teach, Master Pan refused because she was too tired. Seeing this, Master Wang offered to take over and teach, but Soon Rong and Xiu Yu insisted that they only wanted Master Pan as their teacher. Overwhelmed with all the requests, Master Pan even hid in the restroom to avoid the students who kept asking her to teach, even though she was already very tired. However, Soon Rong found her and persuaded her to come back to class. In the end, Master Pan agreed and told Soon Rong she would let Master Yi teach them physical art, which made Soon Rong very happy as her plan had worked. The next day, Wang Ling and his classmates gathered on the school field because Master Yi was going to test their spiritual strength by asking them to throw a 10 kilogram ball. Master Yi explained that a cultivator who had reached the foundation phase should be able to throw the ball over 80 meters. Chan Chao was the first to take the test and was very excited. He managed to throw the ball 100 meters, but for some reason, Master Yi looked a bit disappointed, even though Chan Chao was one of the most talented students at the school. When it was Wang Ling's turn, Soon Rong and Xiu Yu felt nervous, hoping he wouldn't cause any accidents that could damage the school. Wang Ling knew the ball was very light, so he used a technique to make it millions of times heavier just for one second when he threw it, and then it would go back to its normal weight. Jin Kei, knowing how strong Wang Ling was, felt a little nervous but decided to trust him. Wang Ling threw the ball, but it only went 50 meters, which made Master Yi disappointed, and he removed Wang Ling's name from his list of potential successors. However, what they didn't know was that Wang Ling's throw had actually made the ball circle the earth, causing damage in some places and even hitting King Jiao, who was flying to Faction 60, knocking him off his sword. 
Even though Wang Ling didn't do well in the test, he didn't seem bothered. While Soon Rong was surprised when Xiu Yu told her that Wang Ling's throw had circled the earth and finally landed back on the field. Later that evening, Master Wang met with Master Yi to discuss the test results. Master Yi admitted that he hadn't found a suitable successor yet and was surprised that Wang Ling had failed the test. He also informed Master Wang about King Jiao, who was planning to attack Faction 60, not knowing that King Jiao had already been knocked down by Wang Ling's throw. When Master Wang learned that Master Yi hadn't found a successor, he asked if Master Yi would still continue teaching at the school, to which Master Yi confirmed that he would continue teaching gradually. The next day, the members of the Four Emblems faction were seen paying their final respects to King Jiao, who had been defeated by Wang Ling. One member, Su Hu, vowed to take revenge on whoever had beaten King Jiao and planned to attack Faction 60. Meanwhile, Wang Ling was busy working on a project in his room and forgot that he had morning classes at school. He heard the news about King Jiao, who was a fugitive, being captured by the city's hero, Zhao Yi, although it was actually Wang Ling's throne ball that had knocked King Jiao down. Er Ha was curious about what Wang Ling was doing, and Jin Kei explained that Wang Ling was building a new demon world with Er Ha as its theme. Jin Kei said that the underground spiritual vein was like the base of a house, the first thing needed to create anything. He added that Wang Ling had made the spiritual vein using his two favorite packs of fried noodles instead of material from the way of heaven. Although Er Ha trusted Wang Ling's power, he was worried because Wang Ling had created it from nothing. At school, Master Wang was teaching about the underground spiritual vein. He explained that since humans began using scientific cultivation, spiritual energy had affected the Earth's core, causing it to grow underground spiritual veins. Similar to blood vessels in the human body, these veins connect to the Earth's crust and vary in thickness. Places above thicker veins have strong spiritual energy, while those above thinner ones have weaker energy. Master Wang also said that a collapse of the spiritual vein could cause natural disasters. He mentioned that feeling sleepy in class could be a sign of low spiritual energy. When Chan Chao asked about making artificial underground spiritual veins, Master Wang explained that humans couldn't make a vein that could reach the Earth's core. Wang Ling, who had already created spiritual roots, stared out the window, thinking. At the same time, his classmates were surprised by sudden snowfall, even though it was June. Master Yi noticed the snowfall, but decided not to stop it because he wanted to find his successor quickly. Concerned for the student's safety, Master Wang confronted Master Yi, thinking it might be linked to the evil sword master, Chan Nun Swan, but Master Yi refused to explain anything. Later, Wang Ling went to the school field, and Jin Kei told him that Faction 60's underground spiritual vein had been destroyed, causing the unexpected snow at school. As Wang Ling tried to fix it, Chan Chao and Guo Hao began throwing snowballs at him. Wang Ling could have easily dodged the snowballs, but Jin Kei warned him that someone was watching them. Hearing this, Wang Ling let himself get hit by the snowballs, which encouraged Soon Rong and Shou Yu to join in and play. While Wang Ling was playing with his friends, Jin Kei reminded him that the cold was getting worse and the snowstorm was intensifying. However, Wang Ling assured Jin Kei that they still had some time. Feeling the temperature drop, Chan Chao and the others decided to go back inside the school building. In the teacher's lounge, Master Pan was worried about the cold weather, but Master Wang reassured her that Master Yi would take care of it. When she asked about Master Yi's successor, Master Wang said that Master Yi hadn't chosen anyone yet. Master Pan suggested Soon Rong as a good choice because of her talent. She also mentioned that there were many talented students at the school, but Wang Ling wasn't one of them, so she didn't think Master Yi would choose him. Meanwhile, when Chan Chao tried to open the classroom door, he was shocked as his hand froze from the cold air. Inside, students mentioned someone's tongue had frozen, and there was a power outage in the school. Chan Chao wanted to break the door, but Guo Hao warned him that he would get in trouble for damaging school property. Soon Rong suggested using the fireball technique since Chan Chao was good at it, but he only managed to create a small spark, which made Guo Hao tease him. Guo Hao tried next but had the same result. Seeing this, Soon Rong and Shou Yu also tried using the technique, but they could only create small sparks, even though they were among the best students. 
Soon Rong quickly realized that the spiritual energy around them was disappearing, and that the snowstorm was due to problems with the underground spiritual vein at Faction 60. As they tried to think of ways to fix the underground spiritual vein, Shoyu suddenly fainted because she couldn't handle the cold air. So Chan Chao wrapped her in his jacket and quickly took her to the infirmary. Meanwhile, Suhu arrived at Faction 60 and revealed that he was the one who had destroyed the underground spiritual vein to get revenge for King Jiao's defeat. Amid the chaos of the freezing weather, Wang Ling calmly approached Su Hu in the snowstorm. Su Hu, seeing that Wang Ling wasn't affected by the cold, was surprised but Wang Ling said nothing. He then struck Su Hu lightly and defeated him easily. Afterward, Wang Ling planted Jin Kei into the core of the underground spiritual vein to fix it. Using his unlimited spiritual power, Wang Ling restored the vein and the school returned to normal. Master Yi wondered who could have defeated Su Hu and fixed the vein, but he couldn't find anyone on the school grounds. Elsewhere, as Zhao Yi prepared for a press conference, a sword suddenly appeared, and Su Hu fell from the ceiling. The journalist, knowing Su Hu was a fugitive like King Jiao, asked Zhao Yi if he was involved in capturing Su Hu. Even though Su Hu's fall was unexpected, Zhao Yi quickly answered the journalist to avoid suspicion. Later in his office, Zhao Yi's secretary informed him that Su Hu had died from a single strike and falling from a height. The secretary also told Zhao Yi that he was now the most wanted target of the Four Emblems faction because they believed he was the one who had killed their members. Hearing this, Zhao Yi tried to stay calm, but once his secretary left, he became anxious and scared. He quickly contacted Wang Ling, calling him the master, to ask for help. Wang Ling, knowing Zhao Yi's fear, had been working on special clothes to protect him. However, getting the right materials was difficult. Jin Kei suggested trading Wang Ling's favorite fried noodles for materials from the way of heaven. But Wang Ling decided to buy the materials instead and went to the supermarket with his friends. Wang Ling and his friends soon arrived at the supermarket, where they wandered around, looking at the items on display. They were quickly drawn to a giant shrimp in an aquarium, which amazed them. Guahao mentioned that the shrimp had protein levels 300 times higher than beef, but he didn't like its taste because it wasn't delicious. Hearing this, Chan Chao felt jealous because he realized the giant shrimp was very expensive, and he hadn't tried it. After their supermarket visit, they went to an antique shop that sold ancient magical weapons costing millions of spiritual stones. Even though the weapons were powerful, owning them wasn't guaranteed, even if someone had the money. The weapons had minds of their own and could choose their owners. Chan Chao noted that people with strong spiritual strength could control these weapons and even hear them speak. Wang Ling, however, felt overwhelmed in the shop because he could hear all the weapons begging him to buy them. He ignored them and chose to buy fried noodles instead, leaving the weapons sad, and one of them even lost its shine. Meanwhile, a man was watching Wang Ling and his friends through CCTV telling his servant to let them buy anything they wanted. The man knew they were from Faction 60 and secretly planned to get back at them by allowing them to use their spiritual power to buy items. Despite breaking the rules, the man didn't care. His main goal was to cause trouble for Zhao Yi's students. He was too afraid to confront Zhao Yi directly because he heard Zhao Yi was backed by a powerful cultivator. Wang Ling and his friends then visited another store where Wang Ling found the materials he needed and paid 800 spiritual stones. At the same time, Chan Chao became interested in a new item called the Void Glasses. A salesman named Jun explained that the glasses could enhance cultivators' abilities, even without any combat training. Chan Chao tried them on and was excited because they were so advanced, but he became sad when he learned they were expensive. Jun then told Chan Chao that he could buy the Void Glasses using his spiritual power and just needed to scan his fingerprint on a special machine to sign the contract. Guo Hao, aware of the dangers of using spiritual power as payment, warned Chan Chao not to be tempted by Jun's offer. However, Jun, who had already researched Guo Hao's preferences, showed him a blind box containing a rare spiritual beast egg. The chance to raise a spiritual beast and get free parenting guidance tempted Guo Hao. Meanwhile, Soon Rong and Shoyu became suspicious of how Jun knew so much about their friends. While Wang Ling suggested that Jun might have gathered the information through big data, 
Soon Rong insisted on using her credit card to pay instead of letting her friends use their spiritual power. However, Jun, following orders from his boss, refused to accept Soon Rong's credit card without giving a reason. Meanwhile, Wang Ling, who knew about Jun's intentions thanks to Jin Kei, showed Jun a raffle brochure. Seeing this, Jun told his staff to bring a raffle machine. According to the pamphlet, Anyone who spent 100 spiritual stones at the supermarket could spend the machine once and win prizes based on the rules. Since Wang Ling had spent 800 spiritual stones, he had 8 chances to spin. Wang Ling said he wanted the void glasses, and Jun told him that getting a golden ball would win him the glasses for free. Jun was confident that Wang Ling wouldn't win because there were 30,000 silver balls and other prizes in the machine. However, Jun didn't know that Wang Ling had used the time-limited art of great luck, which gave him unlimited luck for one hour. On his first spin, Wang Ling got a golden ball, surprising Jun. Chan Chao and the others cheered for Wang Ling, and Chan Chao hugged him happily. Trying to trick them, Jun claimed that Wang Ling needed two golden balls to get the void glasses for free. But once again, Wang Ling won a golden ball. He also won red rubies, which earned him a free spiritual beast egg, and he gave it to Guo Hao. Wang Ling continued using his luck at a shop that sold rare plants, winning the prize show you wanted. They went to other stores, where Wang Ling's luck didn't stop, and he kept winning raffles and getting many items for free. Watching through CCTV, Jun's boss became angry and told his servant to find out Wang Ling's preferences. Later, at a snack shop, Wang Ling tried to buy a pack of fried noodles, but luck struck again, and he ended up getting all the noodles in the store for free. Frustrated by Wang Ling's luck, Jun decided to quit his job. On the train ride home, Guo Hao and Chan Chao thought about how they could have made big mistakes by using their spiritual power as payment, as Jun had suggested. Chan Chao then suggested selling the items they had won through Wang Ling's luck at a charity sale event at their school. Everyone, including Guo Hao and Wang Ling, who was busy eating his fried noodles, agreed to the plan. Later that evening, Zhao Yu was thrilled to receive a gift from Wang Ling, which turned out to be a special suit made by Wang Ling to protect him. Meanwhile, at the Way of Heaven library, there were 3,000 secret techniques from the Way of Heaven, highly desired by cultivators around the world. Mastering one of these techniques could make a cultivator unbeatable, but most never found a trace of them in their lifetimes as it depended on their spiritual strength. The Way of Heaven Elves worked every day to protect these secrets and handled other small tasks in the world. One of the Elves reported to the Blue Spiritual Master that two new cultivators had died, King Jiao and Su Hu. When the Blue Master saw their wounds, he immediately knew that Wang Ling was the one who had killed them, even though it was unintentional. Knowing the evil deeds of King Jiao and Su Hu, the Blue Master ordered the Elves to imprison them in the Lunar Well so they could reflect on their sins. He then spoke with the Red Spiritual Master, who monitored cultivators globally. The Red Master reported a big increase in people seeking the way of heaven's secret arts, stressing the need to protect these secrets from those with bad intentions. The scene shifted to Chan Nun Swan, climbing an endless staircase. Nan Xian, the second heir of the Infinite Sword Faction, was trying to complete his 6,751st challenge on the Ladder of Mind to learn the secret arts of the Way of Heaven. Even though Nan Xian had great spiritual power, he didn't respect his master, which made him fail again because those who don't respect their teachers are not worthy of learning the secret arts. Despite failing, Nan Xian was confident he would inherit the faction's leadership since his senior was old and would soon pass away. He also had talented disciples who he believed would become his successors unaware that King Jiao and Su Hu, his two disciples, had already died. At the Four Emblems Faction headquarters, Chan Nunswan's two remaining disciples, Song Wu and Zhu Zen, were discussing their plan for revenge against Zhao Yi, who they felt had underestimated their faction. Zhu Zen suggested telling their master about the deaths, but Song Wu thought their master already knew and was testing them. Song Wu also mentioned their master's mysterious disciple, Zero, who was said to be much stronger than them. Song Wu stressed that they needed to solve the problem before Zero did, to avoid looking bad in front of their master. Zhu Zen then told Song Wu about Faction 60's upcoming charity sale and planned to use his fierce flame divine sword to destroy them, as anything the sword touched would explode. 
Confident in his ability, Zhu Zin was observed by the Red Master from the Way of Heaven Library, who noted they should prepare for another deceased cultivator. The Blue Master sighed, wondering why they would challenge the only person on the white list of the Way of Heaven, which would only bring disaster. The next day, Master Pan announced the charity sale event to her students, explaining that they would sell and used items, and the money raised would go to poor factions in the city. Students who participated would earn extra points, and the school also offered special prizes for those who sold the most items. Jean K asked Wang Ling if he planned to sell anything at the charity sale, and Wang Ling replied that he hadn't decided yet. When he returned home, Wang Ling went to the warehouse with Er Ha, who was curious about a sealed cabinet. During his time at Wang Ling's home, Er Ha had never noticed the cabinet and thought Wang Ling might be hiding treasure inside. When Wang Ling opened the cabinet, he invited Er Ha to join him, and they soon arrived at the Way of Heaven Library. Jin K explained the place to Er Ha, who was shocked to learn that Wang Ling could easily access the Way of Heaven. Er Ha, knowing Wang Ling as the strongest cultivator, was surprised to see the seven spiritual masters kneeling before Wang Ling and calling him their master. Er Ha felt grateful that Wang Ling accepted him as his pet dog. Wang Ling planned to trade his favorite pack of fried noodles for a magical item to sell at the charity sale. Er Ha was puzzled about what Wang Ling could get with such a simple item, but Jin Kei explained that the noodles were Wang Ling's most prized possession, even though Er Ha saw them as just snacks. When Wang Ling tossed the noodles into the well, the Red Master pulled out a golden silkworm, saying clothes made from it would greatly boost strength. Wang Ling declined. So the Red Master offered a magical soap that reduces weight, which Wang Ling also refused. The soap was returned to the well, and at that moment, Chan Nunswan, still struggling to reach the way of heaven, slipped on the soap and failed again. The Red Master then offered a golden pill to permanently increase spiritual strength, but Wang Ling turned it down, saying he wanted something simple and ordinary. Er Ha suggested that Wang Ling give the golden pill to his parents, but Wang Ling refused, explaining that his parents taught him not to misuse power. He also said he preferred a simple life. The Red Master then showed Wang Ling various magical items, but Wang Ling kept declining, saying he hadn't found what he wanted yet. While Wang Ling was busy with his requests, Chan Nunswan, still struggling on the ladder of mind, finally had a chance to learn the way of heaven's secret arts. Erha was amazed that a pack of fried noodles could be traded for so many magical items that cultivators around the world would do anything to get. Jin K explained that, despite their great value, fried noodles were very special to Wang Ling. Erha wondered why Wang Ling loved fried noodles so much. It all began when Wang Ling was three years old and doodled in his room, accidentally summoning the Red Master. The Red Master, interested in the painting Wang Ling had made, wanted to take it, but then he noticed Wang Ling's powerful spiritual energy. The Red Master made a deal with Wang Ling, offering a pack of fried noodles in exchange for the painting and promising to put Wang Ling on the way of heaven's white list. Thinking Wang Ling would never reach the way of heaven to find him, little Wang Ling accepted the deal and tasted fried noodle for the first time, instantly loving them. Since then, fried noodles became his favorite food. Back in the present, the Blue Master was upset after learning the truth, and the Red Master apologized. Then, a sealed rice cooker appeared from the well, and Wang Ling quickly chose it. Meanwhile, Chan Nunswan, now with the secret art of the Way of Heaven, had evil plans against the seniors, wanting to become the sole leader of the Infinite Sword Faction. The scene switched to Zhu Zen, who was preparing to destroy Faction 60. As he left, Zhao Yi's colleague, Huang, sneaked into the Four Emblems faction headquarters to investigate. Huang informed Zhao Yi that Zhu Zen was likely headed to Faction 60 to seek revenge for King Jiao and Su Hu. Huang found something unusual at the headquarters round table, and after an incident, he sent the location to Zhao Yi via a communication device. The next day, Chan Chao and his friends discussed the special prizes they might get from the school principal. Chan Chao asked Gua how what he would sell at the charity sale, but Gua Hao said his items hadn't arrived yet and would be delivered when the sale started. Chan Chao showed his father's broadsword, which he was allowed to sell, while Shoyu, who didn't have any magical items, decided to make mini clay figurines for the sale. 
She gave some to her friends, and they admired her skills, as the figurines looked just like them. Soon Rong then asked Wang Ling what he planned to sell, and he showed her a rice cooker from the Way of Heaven Library. Later, the students set up there and used items on stands at the school field. Guo Hao received a package with his sale items, and when he opened the jar, three cute kittens appeared. He explained that the kittens were born the previous night and had to be registered for birth and ownership certificates before he could sell them, so they were only sent after that. Soon Rong immediately recognized the kittens as rare snow jade spiritual cats and picked one up, but another one scratched Chan Chao's face when he tried to hold it and ran away. While Wang Ling and his friends were busy with the charity sale on the school field, Zhu Zen sneaked into the school disguised as a student. He was almost caught by Master Pan for breaking the rules, but after apologizing sincerely, she allowed him to enter without any trouble. Zhu Zen then went to the school rooftop and took out his fierce flame divine sword, planning to attack the students below. However, Wang Ling, sensing the attack, easily stopped it with just a snap of his fingers. Chan Chao, trying to attract more buyers, encouraged Wang Ling to be more active in selling his rice cooker. Guo Hao reminded Chan Chao that Wang Ling was a quiet person and they should respect him. Soon Rong offered to help Wang Ling sell his item, and when Guo Hao asked what she was selling, Soon Rong said it was something ordinary. In reality, she was secretly selling her family's commercial rocket launch button, which was not ordinary at all. Zhu Zen was shocked to find that his attack had been stopped, thinking that Faction 60's cultivators were weaker than him. Even though his first plan failed, Zhu Zen had a backup plan. He put his sword inside a rice cooker and secretly placed it among the items being sold at the charity sale, hoping no one would notice. However, Wang Ling, much stronger than Zhu Zen, quickly spotted the dangerous rice cooker and secured it before it could cause a huge explosion at the school. Wang Ling had already coordinated with Zhao Yi to handle the situation quietly at the school gym. When Zhao Yi asked how Wang Ling managed it, Wang Ling didn't say a word. Instead, he took out his own rice cooker and unsealed it. He then placed Zhu Zen's rice cooker inside his own and sealed it back. Before leaving, Wang Ling told Zhao Yi where to find Zhu Zen, who was still on the rooftop. Zhao Yi rushed up to confront him. On the rooftop, Zhu Zen was shocked to see that his rice cooker had disappeared. Zhao Yi arrived to arrest him, but Zhu Zen fought back, mocking Zhao Yi, saying he was just a golden pill stage cultivator. Zhao Yi confidently responded that as the city's hero, it was his duty to catch criminals like Zhu Zen and his allies. Even though Zhu Zen attacked him, Zhao Yi was unharmed thanks to the special clothes made by Wang Ling. Zhu Zen was confused about how Zhao Yi had magic were usually reserved for immortal stage cultivators and continued to attack until a powerful explosion occurred between them. Meanwhile, students watching the explosion wondered what caused it while Soon Rong expressed her interest in buying Wang Ling's rice cooker. After the charity sale ended, students returned to their classes. The headmaster visited the elite class to announce that they had raised one million spiritual coins to help poor factions in remote areas. He also announced that Wang Ling had won a special prize because Soon Rong had bought his rice cooker for a high price. The headmaster asked Wang Ling what prize he wanted, offering scholarships, certificates, or magical weapons. But Wang Ling wasn't interested in any of those things, and simply said he only wanted a packet of fried noodles. A few days later, Song Wu, the leader of the Four Emblems faction, was seen at the night market carrying King Jiao's spiritual core, which he found in the sea near the city. Song Wu vowed to create a new body for King Jiao after avenging Faction 60. King Jiao then told Song Wu to seek help from their master's old friend in case of trouble. When Song Wu reached the location, a masked person recognized him and immediately handed him a bag. Inside the bag, Song Wu found something he could use to fight against Faction 60. They did not know that Wang Ling was secretly watching their plan. After Song Wu left, Wang Ling knocked on the window just like Song Wu did. The masked man, trembling when he saw Wang Ling, quickly gave him what he wanted, a packet of fried noodles. The next day, Zhao Yi met with his superior and reported that members of the Four Emblems faction had been captured. He also gave his superior a letter from Wang Ling, which said that Song Wu had obtained the key to Nuya's secret realm. Zhao Yi explained that Chan Nunswan, a powerful cultivator, had access to Nuya's secret realm, 
which contained unfinished pottery figurines made by ancient puppet masters. If Song Wu activated those figurines, they could become deadly weapons. Zhao Yi was then instructed to prepare for Song Wu's attack. At school, Master Wang informed the students about the Four Emblems Faction's war challenge against Faction 60. He also mentioned the danger of the pottery figurines and said that their school would be the main battlefield and could be attacked from all directions. Master Pan, hearing that the figurines would be at the spiritual infant level after activation, panicked and suggested sending the students home and closing the school for a few days. However, Master Yi promised to protect the students, saying that if he failed, he wouldn't deserve to be called a sword master. Master Yi used all his spiritual power, which made him young again, and the headmaster pleaded with him to protect the students. The headmaster then instructed Master Wang and Master Pan to prepare for the battle adding that the students had enjoyed peace for a long time and were mature enough to face real challenges since they had been trained in attack and defense techniques. Soon after, Master Pan told Wang Ling and his classmates about the war challenge from the Four Emblems faction. She explained that a challenge order was like a declaration of war between factions, usually made by lower-level factions to challenge higher-level factions for promotion. But this time, Faction 60, a lower-level faction, received a war challenge from the highest-level Four Emblems faction. Wang Ling sighed, realizing his peaceful life was once again disrupted. Master Pan reminded the students of past challenges, including attacks from the Shadow faction and demon invasions that had damaged the school. Despite these hardships, they had always won, showing that good always triumphs over evil. She encouraged the students to stay strong and be ready to fight against evil. Inspired by her speech, the students felt motivated, but their spirits dropped when Master Pan assigned them a task to write a 3,000-word essay about her speech. Song Wu entered Nuiya's secret realm and summoned a large number of pottery figurines. He dressed and prepared the figurines to fight against Faction 60. As Song Wu and his army marched toward Faction 60, Zhao Yi activated the emergency defense system and alerted other righteous factions for help. Soon after, Master Zhong was informed by his butler that Song Wu was passing through their territory on his way to Faction 60. Master Zhong immediately ordered his troops to stop Song Wu because he wanted to be on good terms with Zhao Yi's master, who was believed to be the most powerful cultivator in the world. Other factions, including one led by Master Elizabeth, also decided to support Faction 60 because the headmaster was their close friend. The Kimia family's head joined in because of Master Zhong's influence and respect from other factions. Lord Thunder also gathered faction leaders in the city to help Faction 60 against the evil Four Emblems faction. Knowing their enemy was a high-level faction, they planned to unite their forces and find the best strategy to defeat Song Wu and his army. That night, Master Wang gathered the students and instructed them to use defensive skills to create a protective barrier. Meanwhile, Wang Ling sensed Song Wu's approach and quietly went to monitor the situation. When Song Wu's army arrived and attacked, some students, including Sun Rong, struggled, but Er Ha and his demon companion stepped in to help. Song Wu was about to use his signature move to destroy Faction 60 when Master Yi confronted him at the gate. Song Wu mocked Master Yi as old and weak, claiming no one in Faction 60 could defeat him. However, Wang Ling stepped in and used the Great Disarmament Art to neutralize the pottery figurines and defeat Song Wu. Master Yi, surprised by the use of the Way of Heaven's secret art, wondered who had used it. But Master Wang appeared and believed that Master Yi had defeated Song Wu. After their victory, Zhao Yi ordered his team to secure the Four Emblems faction headquarters. Although they captured most members, Zhao Yi was uneasy because Chan Nunswan, the faction leader, was still missing. Suddenly, their communication was cut off. Meanwhile, Zero, Chan Nunswan's secret disciple, infiltrated the headquarters, planning to avenge his fallen comrades. The next day, Soon Rong visited a bank with her bodyguards. She was greeted by the manager and led to a vault with high security. As one of the wealthiest families, Soon Rong's family had a special storage space on the top floor of the bank. The storage looked like a pill refining furnace with special seals to protect the items inside. Soon Rong placed a pack of fried noodles, a gift from Wang Ling, into the storage. The noodles were valuable to her because they were a special gift from Wang Ling, who cherished them. 
At the same time, Sun Yiyuan appeared and insisted on keeping Sun Rong safe inside the storage for three days after receiving a threat from Zero. Reluctantly, he locked Sun Rong inside, worried about her safety. When Wang Ling heard about the plan to harm Sun Rong, he became furious, breaking his chopsticks in anger. Zero, also known as Huang Long, was a secretive member of the Four Emblems faction, training in a cave beneath their headquarters, which had a strong underground spiritual vein that made him even more powerful. Many high-level cultivators worried that Sun Rong might be in danger because Huang Long was very strong. However, one cultivator felt confident that Sun Rong could protect herself, as the Sun family was not only wealthy, but also known for their strong spiritual power. That night, Wang Ling and his friends went to Sun Rong's house to show their support, which moved her grandfather, Sun Yiyuan. Chan Chao said that keeping Sun Rong in a vault might not be a long-term solution. Guo Hao agreed, but he said Sun Yiyuan did a good job because Huang Long was a skilled thief who could always steal what he wanted. Huang Long was also great at disguises, so Sun Yiyuan didn't want Sun Rong to interact with anyone directly. He made sure Sun Rong was comfortable, setting up a room that looked like her bedroom with Wi-Fi and nutrition pills. The bank also used high-level security with help from Zhao Yi and his team to keep her safe. While everyone was talking in the living room, Wang Ling left, saying he was taking his dog for a walk, but he actually wanted to rescue Sun Rong. He and Er Ha went to her room, broke in, and then Wang Ling fixed the door with his strength. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and the others were still chatting, unaware that it was getting late. At midnight, the power went out at the bank, cutting off their phone connection with Sun Rong. Huang Long, who had successfully kidnapped Sun Rong, revealed his plan. He explained how he mastered the abilities of his captured enemies and felt sure no one could save Sun Rong. Hearing this, Sun Rong panicked, but then Wang Ling appeared to help. He told her that he couldn't come directly because Huang Long's spiritual power was too weak. If Wang Ling entered, the place would be destroyed, risking Sun Rong's life. Wang Ling told Sun Rong to eat the fried noodles he had given her. And when she did, she transformed into her immortal king mode. After eating the noodles, Sun Rong felt her spiritual power grow quickly, sharing some of Wang Ling's sealed power. She asked how much power she had received, and Wang Ling said she got one-tenth of his one million spiritual power, which shocked Sun Rong. She then prepared to fight Huang Long and easily blocked his attacks. As everyone worried about Sun Rong, the power came back on, showing Sun Rong on the screen saying she was okay. But it was actually Air Ha disguised as Sun Rong under Wang Ling's orders. To keep up the disguise, Wang Ling transferred his power to Air Ha through a USB cable. Meanwhile, Jin Kei told Zhao Yi that Sun Rong was fighting Huang Long and that they should get ready to capture him when the fight ended in three minutes. During the battle, Huang Long was confused about how Sun Rong, a foundation phase cultivator, had the power of a high-level fighter. He guessed that the noodles she ate must have been drugged to boost her strength, and he believed that she would soon suffer the side effects. Still, Sun Rong was determined to win and launched a fierce attack. Although her first strike missed, she managed to damage Wang Long's spiritual creation and even knocked him down with her following attacks. Meanwhile, Master Yi was still curious about the mysterious cultivator who could use the secret arts of the way of heaven. He had learned that Huang Long was fighting against this mysterious person. The headmaster told Master Yi that this person was probably not from Faction 60 because it was a low-level faction without anything special. But Master Yi believed that the person was indeed from Faction 60, even though he had no evidence. He then connected the small wordless book to his smartphone to broadcast the fight live so everyone could watch. However, the wordless book could only show Huang Long because he had fought Master Yi before. Despite this, everyone could see that Huang Long was fighting a powerful and mysterious cultivator. During the fight, Chan Chao wondered who this mysterious cultivator was. He suspected it might be Wang Ling because Wang Ling often disappeared during important times. Shou Yu disagreed, saying Wang Ling's spiritual power was weak, although she secretly knew Wang Ling was very powerful. Elsewhere, Lord Thunder, who was watching with Master Wang, was shocked because the mysterious cultivator could move freely in Huang Long's spiritual space and had even injured Huang Long several times. 
Master Wang believed that this mysterious person was much stronger than Huang Long, who was a true immortal phase cultivator. Lord Thunder thought of Wang Ling, remembering how Wang Ling could destroy spiritual vessels and that he had been secretly helping Zhao Yi. However, Lord Thunder wasn't sure about Wang Ling's true power and didn't tell Master Wang. During the intense battle, Huang Long tried to provoke Sun Rong to kill him, hoping to corrupt her cultivation heart. Wang Ling advised Sun Rong to ignore his taunts and keep attacking. As Sun Rong deflected Huang Long's attacks, he became desperate and used all his power, transforming into a berserk mode to kill her, even if it meant losing his own life. However, with Wang Ling's guidance, Sun Rong countered his moves, overpowered him, and pushed him out of his spiritual space. After Huang Long's defeat, Master Yi rushed to the scene to find out who had beaten him. At the same time, Zhao Yi, informed by Jin Kei, quickly captured Huang Long, while Wang Ling and Sun Rong stood at the top of the tower. Soon after, Sun Rong's condition returned to normal, and Jin Kei explained that she could only use one-tenth of Wang Ling's spiritual power for a short time. Wang Ling gave her a packet of fried noodles as a reward for helping keep the world safe. As she ate the noodles, Sun Rong commented on how hard it was to maintain world peace, and Wang Ling agreed, saying their world was fragile. She then suggested they work together, but Wang Ling stayed silent. Just as Sun Rong was about to share her feelings with Wang Ling, Master Yi arrived, and Wang Ling vanished. Finding only Sun Rong, Master Yi sensed Wang Ling's strong aura around her and concluded she was the mysterious cultivator who defeated Huang Long. Master Yi knelt before Sun Rong, acknowledged her power, and asked her to become the new leader of the Infinite Sword Faction because she was much stronger than him. In the following days, Chan Nun Swan, who now had the way of Heaven's Secret Art, returned to the Four Emblems Faction headquarters, only to find it sealed off. Nan Xian questioned one of Zhao Yi's subordinates about what had happened, but at first, she refused to answer. Nan Xian then used his powers to manipulate her mind, and make her tell him everything. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and his friends attended their physical education class, but Sun Rong was absent due to family matters. During class, they practiced lifting and hip throws. Guo Hao faced off against Ku Suan, while Chan Chao sparred with Wang Ling. Since Sun Rong wasn't there, Xiu Yu sparred with Er Ha, treating him like a senior because he was also from Faction 60. Guo Hao easily threw Ku Suan, and Xiu Yu managed to throw Er Ha as well. However, Erha surprised everyone by using shadow techniques, suddenly appearing behind Shoyu and taking her down. Chan Chao then wondered why Sun Rong was absent, suggesting she might have personal problems. The teacher scolded him, telling him to focus on the lesson. Chan Chao then tried to bring down Wang Ling, but he found Wang Ling's body was unusually heavy, even though Wang Ling looked weak. To avoid attracting attention, Wang Ling pretended to be weak, so Chan Chao could throw him. Er Ha and Xiu Yu soon realized that Wang Ling was pretending, so no one would suspect him. Later, Guo Hao told his friends that they had been invited by Zhao Yi to visit the hit immersive theater to watch a battle of ancient cultivators. The show would feature the legendary sword master, Fun Rue, and Guo Hao was excited to learn more about him. Meanwhile, Master Yi visited Sun Rong's family, and said he wanted to make Sun Rong the new leader of the Infinite Sword Faction. Sun Yiyuan laughed at the idea, saying Sun Rong wasn't capable of leading. To protect Wang Ling's secret, Sun Rong denied Master Yi's claims, saying she was only at the foundation phase. Sun Yiyuan then warned Master Yi that making Sun Rong a rival to Nan Xian could put her in danger. Seeing that Sun Yiyuan couldn't be persuaded, Master Yi decided to leave. Before he left, Sun Rong gave him a ticket to the hit immersive theater in the city, saying the show would be spectacular. Master Yi accepted the invitation, and Sun Rong apologized for not meeting his expectations as a leader, hoping he would find someone else suitable to lead the Infinite Sword Faction. The next day, Wang Jiao told Wang Ling and Er Ha about his hospital visit. Wang Ling suggested that his father use observation techniques to check their health, but his mother rejected the idea. Later, Wang Ling wore goggles while working in his room, saying it was for everyone's safety. Shortly after, Wang Ling took Er Ha and told him he had a surprise for him. Wang Ling attached an amulet to his wardrobe, 
which suddenly turned into a portal to another world. Jin Kei explained that they were going to the new demon world that Wang Ling created for Erha. Wang Ling said no planet in the galaxy was good for demons to live on, so he made a peaceful planet for them, leaving Erha amazed. The scene then shifts to Chan Chao and his friends, who arrived at Zhao Yi's place to watch a theater show. Zhao Yi explained that it was an exclusive performance, so they were the only audience. Chan Chao mentioned that they were waiting for Wang Ling, but Zhao Yi said Wang Ling had already entered the theater earlier. Soon Rong then told them that Wang Ling had won the theater tickets from a lottery. Shou Yu quickly grabbed Soon Rong's arm, asking what Wang Ling was up to this time. Soon Rong reassured her not to worry and to enjoy the show. Zhao Yi then used a talisman from Wang Ling, which Shou Yu recognized as the Space Substitution Rune, a powerful spell that turns any door into a special one. When Zhao Yi opened the door, Wa Hao and Chan Shao were excited because only top-level cultivators could create this kind of immersive theater. Meanwhile, Erha found himself in the new demon world created by Wang Ling and was deeply moved by Wang Ling's kindness. Wang Ling then showed Erha his abilities, using a special scroll to manipulate nature, like growing trees and controlling the weather. When Chan Shao and the others arrived, they were impressed by the world, especially the rare plants filled with strong spiritual energy, showing that the creator had a very high cultivation level. Possibly in the immortal phase, Guo Hao asked Zai Yi about who created the place, and just then, Wang Ling and Er Hao arrived riding a dragon. Wang Ling got off and told his friends to ride the dragon while he summoned a unicorn named Seal V with his sword. He offered Sun Rong a ride on the unicorn, and she happily accepted, holding Wang Ling's hand. Chan Chao, who was excited at first, felt sad seeing how close they were. Master Yi then joined them, welcomed by Zhao Yi. Elsewhere, Nan Xian discovered what happened to his disciples and suspected Sun Rong of being involved in their downfall and the fall of the Four Emblems faction. Using soul-searching techniques, he traced Sun Rong's aura to Wang Ling's house. But when he opened the door, he stepped into Wang Ling's demon world and confronted Master Yi. Confident in his new strength from the way of heaven, Nan Xian unleashed his powerful spiritual energy, intimidating Master Yi. Wang Ling directed Seal V to protect Sun Rong and the others from Nan Xian's strong pressure, while Master Yi used his powers to shield himself and Zhao Yi. Seeing Nan Xian's immense power, Master Yi realized Nan Xian had mastered the way of heaven, making him much stronger than himself. Master Yi struggled to contain Nan Xian's power, fearing for his life. Luckily, Wang Ling stepped in, easily stopping Nan Xian's attack and saving them. Nan Xian confidently told Master Yi that he was only using a small part of his power and that Master Yi didn't stand a chance against him. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and Guo Hao, thinking they were still watching a theater performance, remained excited even though they couldn't clearly see the fighters' faces. Erha then told them to focus on the battle rather than the actors. During the fight, Master Yi released his strong spiritual power and even transformed into a younger version of himself. As he prepared to use one of his special sword moves, Soon Rong noticed that his power had increased ten times more than before. Not wanting to lose, Nan Xian used his own special move combined with the Way of Heaven's Secret Art, which caused negative emotions in anyone affected by his spiritual power. Jin Kei explained that weaker people would feel these emotions more strongly. Sun Rong was mostly unaffected due to her strong power, but Chan Chao, Guo Hao, and Er Ha, who were much weaker, became very frustrated and angry. Er Ha even started losing his temper because the fight had destroyed the new demon world. Seeing this, Wang Ling used a purification technique to clear Nan Xian's evil aura and calm everyone down. As Nan Xian mocked him, Master Yi used the powerful Sword of Earth technique. Erha remarked that the Sword of Earth was almost as great as the Way of Heaven's Secret Arts. Nan Xian was annoyed, thinking their master had taught this technique to Master Yi, but Master Yi denied it, saying he learned it on his own after their master passed away. This made Nan Xian even angrier, as he believed their master always praised and protected Master Yi, but never cared about him. The scene then shifted to the past, showing Nan Xian asking their master, Fun Rue, why he chose Master Yi as his heir 
when Nan Xian had won the contest. Fan Rue said that he had made his decision because Nan Xian had strayed from the teachings. Fan Rue remembered a past contest where Nan Xian and Master Yi competed. Although Master Yi should have won, he chose to help Nan Xian instead. However, Nan Xian, wanting to lead the Infinite Sword faction, refused Master Yi's help and tried to beat him. When Fan Rue chose Master Yi as his successor, Nan Xian became furious and pushed his master off a cliff into a bottomless abyss. Back in the present, Nan Xian attacked Master Yi with his Sword of Heaven, but Master Yi withstood it. Determined to stop Nan Xian from using the Way of Heaven for evil, Master Yi was willing to fight to the death. Knowing Master Yi couldn't survive another attack, Wang Ling activated his Immortal King mode in one eye to absorb the spiritual force. Nan Xian, angered, intensified his attack. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and Guo Hao thought the fight was just a realistic theater performance. Guo Hao mentioned that lottery winners often participate as extras, which made sense when Wang Ling approached Master Yi to help him fight Nan Xian. Master Yi was surprised, realizing that Wang Ling was the one with the way of heaven power in Faction 60. Master Yi offered to help Wang Ling with his Sword of Earth, thinking Wang Ling couldn't handle Nan Xian's power alone. However, Wang Ling didn't need much effort to stop Nan Xian's attack. He used the art of great purification to dissipate the attack and easily broke Nan Xian's giant celestial sword, defeating him. Afterward, Wang Ling questioned why Nan Xian would choose evil to win. When Wang Ling spoke, Nan Xian became furious, feeling like Wang Ling was lecturing him even though he might know only a bit more about the way of heaven. But Nan Xian was shocked when Wang Ling revealed the seal of Wei in his palm, a mark of mastery over the three thousand ways of heaven. Even Er Ha was amazed, not knowing Wang Ling had mastered all of the way of heaven secrets. Soon after, the seven spiritual masters approached Wang Ling and turned into diamond fragments that merged with his hand. Master Yi asked what Wang Ling planned to do, and Wang Ling replied that he would eliminate the demon. With just a flick of his finger, Wang Ling removed the demonic aura from Nan Xian's body and completely defeated him. Wang Ling then used telepathy to contact Zhao Yi, telling him to capture Nan Xian immediately. Impressed by Wang Ling's power, Master Yi asked him to lead the Infinite Sword faction, but Wang Ling politely declined, saying he still had much to learn and wasn't ready for that role. Although Master Yi returned to his old appearance, he said he wanted to stay and fix the place with his remaining spiritual energy before he passed away. Wang Ling stepped in, offering to use his power to restore the place and extend Master Yi's life by 500 years so he could continue looking for a successor for the faction. After Wang Ling extended Master Yi's life, Master Yi regained his youth, and Wang Ling promised to protect Faction 60 with his friends. Master Yi thanked Wang Ling and asked about the swordsmanship Wang Ling used to defeat Nan Xian. Wang Ling explained that it was a technique he had created himself and promised to teach it to Master Yi another time. Soon, Chan Chao and the others arrived, still excited about the theater performance. They praised Wang Ling's performance and introduced themselves to the younger version of Master Yi, thinking he was just an actor. Chan Chao and Guo Hao asked Master Yi for his autograph, which he gladly gave, telling them to visit again sometime. Soon Rong then suggested they have a picnic there, which Wang Ling agreed to. Shou Yu also praised Wang Ling for creating such a nice place for Er Ha and the demons, feeling confident that Wang Ling could restore the area. Two months later, Wang Jiao and his wife went to see Li for a medical checkup because she had been feeling nauseous and weak lately. Wang Jiao was worried, but Li said she was fine and revealed that she was pregnant. Wang Jiao was surprised because he didn't expect his wife to be pregnant with their second child, especially since Wang Ling was already 17 years old. So the moral of the story is, if you want to solve all your problems, just keep a packet of fried noodles handy. You never know when it might save the day.